Hi, I'm going to give a quick talk on the heart. I'm going to cover um, just some of the gross anatomy, um, gross function, and gross pathologies. So let's take a start. First of all, the heart is a four chambered vessel um, as opposed to a crocodile, which is a three chambered. It, it supposedly makes it more efficient. Now, a few things to note this is in the anatomical position. The apex of the heart is there. Um, and here's your four, four chambers. You've got the left atrium, left ventricle, right atrium, right ventricle. You've got four valves, so the number four is quite important. You've got your mitral valve, which is a two-leaf valve. Your aortic valve, which is a three-leaf valve. You've got your pulmonary valve, which is a um, three-leaf valve. And you've got your tricuspid valve, which is a three-leaf valve. So here we see the papillary muscles attached to the back of the mitral valve, which then attach to the coordinate tendi and the trabecular carne, and they prevent the um, or help prevent the back pressure opening the mitral valve when the ventr left ventricle contracts. Now there's a curve on both sides. Now just the function of the heart, it goes something like this. Basically the top two vessel, top two chambers will be compressed when the bottom two are dilated, or contracted and dilated and then they swap. So it goes like that. So, our blood comes into here, our oxygenated blood comes through our four pulmonary veins. Typically four pulmonary veins, so they go through these orifices. So you've got your left pulmonary veins and your right pulmonary veins here. So oxygenated blood flows in here, like that, like that. Lots, lots of nice oxygenated blood. Remember that's a trick question, you can have a vein with oxygenated blood. They'll often ask you that when you're first a med student um, or biology student or something. And the blood goes into your atrium. The atrium is quite a thin walled vessel relative to your um, left ventricle and essentially operates as a primer pump. Your heart is essentially a, a type of pump but it does have some other functions um, including uh, it, it affects the amount of salt through some little, some other little functions it has, and there are some other things, but primarily it is a pump. Um, so your oxygenated blood comes in the top, it goes through the mitral valve, and then uh, that closes off, squeeze into there. Then this vessel, this chamber contracts, uh, the myocardium contracts, that's the heart muscle, literally muscle of the heart. The blood goes through the aortic valve into the aorta. So there it is there, and then into our aorta. So there's our nice uh, red blood going through there. The aorta's got several parts to it. It's got the root of the aorta, the ascending aorta, the arched aorta, and the descending aorta. Now I've noticed a lot of um, anatomical texts, they don't kind of show you where the descending aorta goes, they kind of just hide it behind the heart. I've done the same thing, but it's convenient. But just remember the descending aorta goes behind there, and it, it comes out again down here. So there is, it is there. From the aorta, at the root of the aorta, you've got your takeoffs for your coronary arteries. I've drawn them here and here and here. Those coronary arteries are essential. That's what actually gives your heart its supply of oxygenated blood, a lot of the heart muscle. That's where you hear um, a lot of people having coronary bypasses or a, a lot of heart failure, heart attack or uh, myocardial infarction as it's called um, occurs because these coronary arteries become occluded so the blood supply the the proper word is they say the coronary arteries are no longer patent and the blood supply can't get to um, somewhere on the heart now it become occluded by um, having an atheroma which is uh, basically a plaque on the side of the um, coronary artery and that can just get too large and then it ruptures and it occludes or some, some, something which is somewhere else can come and occlude that vessel. But occlusion is the main thing, it, it can become occluded, and that's when you get a heart attack or myocardial infarction. Now, it's quite interesting, this is a very strong uh, vessel, the, the aorta. It's like a Nilex hose. It, you'd probably have a job trying to rip it even on a cadaver if you tried. It's very it's surprisingly strong, it has to be, I suppose. Um, this part here, the, the roots of the aorta, has quite marvellous expansion properties. So that even when 
this is expanding and contracting, it gives you a quite a good even flow. It evens out a lot of the pressure of the flow. And also, as it contracts, when this is closed, this, this valve here is closed, that's when your takeoffs go to your coronary arteries. Now let's go to the other side of the heart. So now we'll move to the right side of the heart. We'll change to a blue color to represent deoxygenated blood. And we see here the SVC, or superior vena cava, and the blood comes through this from the upper body to the right atrium. And then lower down we have the inferior vena cava, or IVC, and the deoxygenated blood larger from the lower body flows up into the right atrium again. Once we're in the right atrium, which is also a thin walled vessel and essentially acts as a primer pump, the right atrium squeezes together like so, or contracts rather, and it goes through the tricuspid three leaf valve and enters into the right ventricle. That tricuspid valve closes and then the uh, right ventricle contracts and it goes through the um, pulmonary valve into the pulmonary vessels or pulmonary arteries and you have deoxygenated blood flowing in the arteries to the lungs. Uh, where the lungs eventually reoxygenate the blood and return it to the pulmons. The lungs to get, get um, reoxygenated and then it comes back through here. So it actually eventually comes back to here. Now we've covered um, what happens in an ischemic attack, basically the blood or the oxygens, or the blood and the oxygens cut off to the heart muscle. Um, some other things you can get going wrong with the heart is if you get high blood pressure, the myocardium now remember myocardium is one of the major three muscle types you have. You've got striated muscle, smooth muscle, and myocardium. Myocardium has uh, a high preponderance of mitochondria relative to other muscles, which lets it operate somewhat continuously. There's other features that let it operate continuously. Like if you, if you to try to move your arm muscle as much as a heart muscle, it would get um, very sore after about an hour or so. You can't have that in the heart muscle. We need it to operate all the time. The other thing is, the heart muscles have intercalculated discs. That allows the electrical charge to flow through uh, the muscle in a wave kind of formation so that it's almost continuous by itself, like so, so it can keep going. Um, I might touch later on the actual electricals from your sinoatrial node um, and so forth and so on, but we won't have time to go there right at the moment. Um, so another thing you can get is if you've got high blood pressure your body adapts to this by making this um, vessel wall too thick. It gets thicker and thicker and thicker. And as it gets thicker, you actually lose size in the ventricle as well. So while it gets stronger and stronger and stronger, it, takes, it actually gets a lesser and lesser volume. So less blood is actually being delivered to the, um, the whole body. And this, this doesn't really do you much good. And one of the things clinically is it can shift the position of the apex of the heart as this hypertrophies, so it becomes too strong, becomes too muscly. So that can be effect of high blood pressure. And then another thing you can get happening is you can get uh, regurgitation through some of the valves. So once these valves lose competency, instead of um, the blood going through your uh, aortic valve, some of it starts going back through either your mitral valve or your tricuspid valve and again you might get hypertrophy because of that. Alternatively this valve or this valve could fail and you'll get a similar sort of thing. You're going to get a little backwash all the time so you try and pump it and it goes through but as soon as you relax an incompetent valve and comes back through. Um, you can get infections of these valves. Uh, one of the problems with infections is they're quite hard to get rid of and uh, the other thing is if you get a friable piece of material on this side of the heart it's not very good because if it breaks off, it then can go straight up your aorta. In the actual aorta, you've got your brachiocephalic, which means uh, your brachio slash head uh, artery. You've got your common cartoid artery, and you've got your left subclavian artery. And these more or less go up and supply your brain. If you start getting little bits flicking off here, friable material as it's called, it can give you a um, what was commonly called a stroke. Uh, it will go up and it will cut blood off somewhere further up. Um, another thing is you can get stenosis, which means this gets smaller and smaller and smaller, so the blood flow becomes starved coming through here, and that has a, a, a various sequelae that go with it. So, other terms know you get left heart failure, left heart failure, and right heart failure. Um, 